Um, it feels really good to celebrate 10 years since uh, the original Halo uh, was released and, uh, and we were launching Halo Anniversary exactly 10 years to the day on November 15th, uh, 2011. And uh, I, I played it first as a fan and now I get to do it for a living and it feels great actually. Uh, people ask us that uh, a lot. I mean, it's uh, the the funny thing about Halo Anniversary is it's a uh, it's a collection of uh, it does actually include things from Halo Two. It includes things from Halo PC. It's really a celebration of ten years of Halo and a celebration for Halo Reach fans as well. So, if we did do Halo Two, it would have to make sense. It would have to be a package that that offered something new in the way that Halo Anniversary offers Xbox Live play for the first time on some of these maps and Xbox Live co-op and so on. And so for it to make sense, it would have to have content that, that added something to the universe rather than simply a straight remake. And we haven't really had time to think about that because we've been so busy working on this. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I started my career with Halo 2, actually. And yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely love to. And, you know, if... Uh, if people love Halo Anniversary, uh, maybe we can convince the right people to let us keep going and remake Halo 2 as well. This is, uh, I mean, Halo Anniversary is uh, definitely a labor of love for us, and it's something that a lot of people have poured a lot of time in. But most of the team, and there are 200 people back at 343, have been working on Halo 4. Halo's different for every player. I mean, I, I know players who are only interested in the story and they read the books and they, they watch the cinematics and that's why they play it. I know people who only play multiplayer and I know people who only play Team SWAT in multiplayer. So the, the Halo audience is not monolithic. There are different types of Halo fan. And I think that the game's variety and the richness and depth of the game's sandbox makes that possible. And, and uh, it's dangerous to try and be all things to everyone, but with, with such a rich universe and such a deep, rich sandbox, uh, we've made a fairly good run of it so far. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, we, we've we always had a really good relationship with, with uh, Brazilian players uh, over the years. And, uh, and actually, Latin America as a whole has always been a, a fairly passionate um, uh, Halo following. And so... Uh, my message to the Brazilian fans is uh, we've this is only the beginning you know that we're celebrating 10 years and that's the last 10 years but uh, we, we can all look forward to the next 10 years together I mean I'll, I'll, I'll let Chad opine uh, but I mean I think there's I think there's plenty of room for lots of different types of shooter I mean Halo's fairly unique it's it's a big sandbox shooter and as you said it's a sci-fi shooter so there's a different tone in the universe but I think there's plenty of space for uh, you know the contemporary war shooters uh, something is sort of uh, thought thoughtful as Bioshock uh, or even Deus Ex which is more like an RPG but they all use uh, first person shooter conventions but I think there's lots of new stuff coming into those that genre and still lots of room for innovation and we, we hope to be innovating ourselves I mean as far as I'm concerned um, having competition is a good thing you know you have other people bringing their own ideas to the first person table and you see what works uh, and what might not work as well and that helps you kind of fuel ideas for your own work and um, with Halo 4 and with the future of the Halo franchise uh, and if there are things that we can learn from the other games out there I mean more power to us for learning and uh, I mean, there's just some fantastic titles out there uh, I just got through Deus Ex myself absolutely a fantastic game and uh, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's to everyone's benefit. And if people start to feel like if it, it, it kind of gets to this congestion point where there are so many games out there that sort of feel like they're starting to play the same, eventually, you know, someone breaks through and they'll make something that is a brand new experience while staying within the genre. And uh, I mean, that was I think uh, Halo One. The original Halo was a kind of a breakthrough title in and of itself, not necessarily because it did things that no one else had done before, but because it got all of its different formulas exactly right. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think any harm comes from there being a lot of shooters on the market. I mean, 
Halo Wars was a really interesting experience for us because it, it let us expand the universe a little bit and, and deal with different corners of the fiction. I think the most important lesson for me with Halo Wars is it showed that the universe uh, can be interpreted in really radically different ways and still feel like Halo. When you hear a warthog in Halo Wars, you know it's a warthog and it feels like the Halo universe. And I think, you know, with different platforms coming up and, and things like tablets and PC and mobile experiences, people want to digest Halo in different ways. And, uh, you know, we should we should be prepared to, to look at different ways to, to present Halo, whether it's something as simple as a novel or something as complex as an FPS. Um, we definitely want to explore his character uh, a little more deeply, but we're, you know, people like him because he's a strong, silent type. So he's not suddenly going to start talking all the time. I think you, we can learn more about him through context and through his surroundings and through the people that, that surround him and his friends and his enemies. 